Hello, this is Alexander from Galileo Sky. The previous video was about how to choose the place to install the tracker in the car. Today I'll show you how to mount the wires in the device and also show you how to connect to the lines of the car's outboard network. Let's start with the unpacking. In addition to the device itself, the Galileo Sky 7X package includes a connector block, a set of wires, a fuse block with a fuse, and, if the device is not equipped with internal antennas, then the package contains external GSM and GPS antennas, as well as a device passport and user manual. The wires supplied with the unit are already crimped and ready to be plugged into the connector. The red and black wires are for connecting the power supply to the device. We recommend you to power the unit from the car's battery directly or from those lines of the onboard network, where is there enough voltage after the engine is turned off, so the device will always be in touch. To find out the purpose of each contact, look at the printed marking. It is located on the back side of the device. Here it is. Pay attention that the contact circuit is shown as it would look already installed in the device. The molding on one side matches the latch. If you need to use more device contacts, then you can always crimp and install additional wires in the block. We recommend using stranded copper wire at least 0.5 square millimeters or AWG20. The supplied wires allow you to connect the device with a supply voltage of up to 48 volts. The operating temperature range of wires is from minus 40 to plus 105 degrees Celsius. Pay attention to the stripped wires ends, here it is. For crimping and connecting to the block, Malox metal lugs are suitable. They are designed to fix the crimped wire in the block. You will need a special tool to crimp this ferrule. Here it is. First, you need to strip the free 4 mm of wire. Next, the wire is placed in the ferrule so that the stripped part of the wire is located in the clamping part of the ferrule closest to the center. In this case, it is important to have outer clamps touching the insulation. Usually, it is more convenient to first install the tip into the jaws of the crimping tool and then insert the wire into the tip as described. Pay attention to which side we insert the tip. The tip is crimped. Now install the crimped wire into the block. To do this, insert the wire into the connector from the wider side until it stops. If everything is done correctly, you won't remove the wire from the block without breaking it. Now I'll show you how to connect to the vehicle's onboard network. There are several ways to connect to the device. For example, to the parts of the fuse box using an additional fuse, or the second way, to the car line directly. Let's go the second way. You'll need special couplers. Like this. There are several different sizes of it, but now we'll use the small one. As an example, we took a coupler designed for wires with a cross section of 0.5 to 1.5 square millimeters. These tabs are easy to install. They have special places to mount a pair of wires. From one side, we insert the wire to which you want to connect. From the other, the wire to be connected. Now you need to press the blade and the connection is ready. Now the wires are mounted into the connector and plugged into the onboard network. Simply insert the connector into the device until it stops. Like this. The latch on the connector is fixed and prevents it from spontaneous detachment. If you need to disconnect the connector from the tracker, press the latch tab and carefully pull the connector out of the device. Don't pull on the wires, remove the block by holding it by the plastic part. So we figured out how to mount the wires into the tracker connector, what materials and tools are needed for this, and also showed a convenient way to connect to the car's onboard network. That's all for now. Alexander from Galileo Sky was with you. Goodbye.